welcome back to my channel. In today's vlog, we're going to be reading my most anticipated romance books of 2024. So we're going to be reading The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. This one comes out real flippin' soon, April 2nd, I believe. I'm also already into it. I'm loving it so much. We're going to be reading Swift and Saddle by Lila Sage. It's a sequel to Done and Dusted. We love a cowboy. And then we're going to be reading Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. I've heard mixed reviews about this one, so I'm intrigued to see how I'm going to feel. But as always, this is going to be a spoiler-free vlog. If I do add in any spoilers, you will know in advance so that you can click on out or just fast forward. Let's get into it and let's see what I think. Okay, let me get y'all caught up on where I am. I'm currently reading The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm literally already 50% into it. So sorry for leaving y'all behind, but like I couldn't stop. A sequel to The Cheat Sheet, but they're interconnected standalones and you really do not have to read The Cheat Sheet first in order to understand this one right here. But it is really nice to see the friend group again. That is the part that I'm absolutely adoring. But this is a second chance workplace, let's have something crazy in Vegas happen vibe. Oh my god, it's so good. So he needs a new agent. He hires someone thinking her name is Mac. He goes to meet her and it's who he knows is Nora, but her name is Nora McKenzie. She just now goes by Mac. They were head over heels in love with each other in college. He was convinced that he was going to marry her and then all of a sudden she just breaks up with him out of the blue and he's never truly moved on from her. And so he's like, you know what? I cannot work with you. I can't do this. He's like, please, like this needs, this needs to happen. Like I cannot go further in my career without you at this point. So he's doing all these ridiculous things to try and get her to quit. She's literally a trooper, is not quitting one bit. They have amazing chemistry. They go on a work trip together in Vegas and he tells her, hey, like we can't work together anymore. I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna have to fire you. I, I'm not able to move forward with my life while you're here. She understands and she's like, okay, then can we just be friends for now? And like, let's go get a drink together at the bar. Eight hours later, they wake up in each other's bed. She looks down at her finger and she sees a tattoo ring. What happens in Vegas? Oh, they get married. <laughs> Okay, we are 83% into the book. We have left the honeymoon period and we're now back in the real world. So let's finish it up and see what I'm feeling. Finished the rule book pretty dang late last night and I think I'm gonna give it a 4.5 star rating. I really enjoyed it and hands down, I think it's Sarah Adams' best book. But there's a little something towards the end that I kind of felt was not unnecessary but could have been handled a little differently. But that's normally how I feel with her books. So I think 4.5 is what we're gonna settle on. I think a lot of people are gonna love this one though. I really do believe this is her best book. I loved the marriage convenience slash what happens in Vegas slash second chance vibe it had. Like it was really fun. And also, also, Miss Sarah Adams actually did some spicy scenes. Now normally her books are closed door, but she, she cracked the door open a little bit on a few scenes, so that was very interesting as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed it, 4.5 stars. And so now I think we're gonna read Swift and Saddled, which I'm really excited for because I love Dud and Dusted so much. And I just feel like it's a little warm outside. It's, I'm due for a cowboy romance, you know, like I'm due for one. So let's hop into that and I'll keep y'all updated. Thousands of tears later. Worst booktuber of the year award goes to who? To me? Oh my gosh, I am so, honored i am so honored because guess what i um completely read swift and saddled and didn't film a single thing i did not film a single thing for y'all because i read this in one sitting i didn't move and i also cried not because it was sad but because it was just oh it was so sweet and so cutie and y'all really need to read this one and i know i didn't show y'all anything from it but it was so good black cat golden retriever hits every day of the week and the mental health representation from my main man wes my main man Wes, I'll be thinking about for the rest of my life. This was so good. I wish I would have filmed this for y'all again. Worst booktuber award ever. I was going to start it and then I was going to film it and then I just didn't move. I did not move until this thing was done. So y'all really need to pick this one up. I loved it so much. Here's where we're going from this video. I'm either just going to show y'all footage of me reading Fangirl Down. So then you'll have the rule book and Fangirl Down for the rest. Or I am currently reading Wild Love by Elsie Silver. I'm actually almost done with it. I'm loving this one as well. 250 pages in, so I might just show y'all like the tail end of this thing without any spoilers. But let me just tell you, even if you don't see me reading this thing, that I'm loving it and I will give you my full review on it because it's so good and y'all need to add it to your TBRs. I don't want to speak too soon, but I think this might be her best book. Like actually, I think this might be her best book. I didn't think any man would be able to beat Cade, would be able to beat Theo for me, but Ford? Ford. This man, this man is everything to me. Also, if y'all didn't know, every single book in the series is following a single dad. 
that's all I'm going to say because I actually had some twists and turns in chapter one and chapter two where I was just like, whoa, I did not know this was the direction of the story and I ate it up. So try and avoid spoilers for that because I do think it's very interesting to go in with that perspective of not knowing anything. It hit. Let me just tell you, I love a dual POV where we get our little female character and she's like, I hate him. We've always been enemies. We've always not gotten along. We've always just bantered and argued together. And then it quickly pans to his POV where it's like, I have always been in love with her. Ooh, I've always, always, always been in love with her. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Ford Grant, ladies and gents. Also, this is Willa's brother from Heartless. So if y'all read Heartless and you want to see more of Willa, She's in here. She's in here and it made my heart so happy. But you don't have to have read Chestnut Springs first to read this series. That is perfectly fine. But if you already have, even better. Even better. Ooh, this is a comforter. I have an extra one and I just swapped out my other one. So I'm like, I'm going to use it on the couch. Comfy vibes only. Let's get reading. I have about 20 minutes until I have to do some work things, so. Oh, also, let me set the scene. Let me set the scene because you don't know where the heck I'm at. This is going to be spoiler free, of course, because we do not gatekeep and we do not spoil here, at least without a spoiler warning. So you guys are safe. Don't you fret. Some things have happened between our two leads. They have not revealed this to her brother. Again, Ford is her brother's best friend. And so they're not like sneaking around, but they're also, they haven't revealed anything to her brother yet. They're kind of teetering on the line of, well, if we tell him, he's going to freak out. But if we don't tell him, he's going to freak out. So they're trying to figure out what the heck they want to do with this situation. But also they're trying to figure out what the heck they are. Like this just happened. They're trying to figure out what they want. And so it's kind of a sticky mess. I feel like it's going to get messy real quick. But it's so good. We love a mess. Not her diary key. Oh my god, her diary key! Wait, why is that actually so iconic? If that were happened in real life, I'd probably be like, that's crusty. <laughs> A fictional man does it? That is so iconic. <laughs> if you read this book, look out for the diary key scene. Internally screaming. I had come to terms with the idea that you would never happen for me. You were a memory, not a goal. Oh, what? That's so good. That's so good. This is probably the easiest five star I've ever handed out. Like genuinely from like chapter three, I knew this was going to be a five star, which is just the best feeling in the whole entire world. So that is such a win from this video, such a flippin' win, but also like who would have doubted Elsie Silver? Cause I wouldn't have. This book genuinely has my new favorite book boyfriend to ever exist. And I thought that that was gonna be Wes from um, Swift and Saddled. No, no, no. It is Ford from Wild Love. It is literally all of the best aspects of Cade Eaton mixed with all the best aspects of Theo Silva. In one, in one. Every single time that I thought that this was gonna get messy, no one was gonna communicate, it was gonna frustrate me and it was gonna lower a star rating. Elsie Silver just swerved. She swerved. She swerved and it was just the best thing ever. There was amazing communication and that the characters didn't do anything to hurt the other ones just for plot which is one of the biggest things that I cannot stand in romances is because it's the third act whether it's a breakup whether it's oh my goodness I can't believe you did that. No it wasn't just for plot. They ended up it felt real. It felt very real and I was here for it. So that was a win. I'm now reading I can grab it. Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I feel. I am on page 88. But I really don't think anything has happened, which is a little bit of a bummer, but Tessa Bailey books are normally hit or miss for me. So I don't know. I feel like it could pick up. It could be a little bit of a trust the process. But so far, also, I learned the Masters are currently going on. Like, what a win that I just happen to pick up a golf romance while the Masters are going on. Like, Go sports. Go sports. In this book, we were following Wells, who used to be like an amazing golfer. Like he was like the it man of the golf world. I don't know terminology, so please excuse that. Um, but he's also like the bad boy of the golf world. So he's gotten into a lot of problems. He's difficult to work with. He's rude. And now his swing kind of sucks in the lamest of terms that I can give you. Because again, I don't know any terminology. So he's like, I'm done. I'm quitting. And this girl right here, this is Josephine. She's our main protagonist. She's the fangirl. She has been obsessed with him for forever. She's always cheering him on. But he is incredibly rude to her one day. She's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. You've taken me for granted. I am done. Whatever. I was to apologize to her after this big hurricane happened and her whole entire family's store is like 
demolished. She did not pay for insurance. And so that's a big yikes. That's a big yikes. So she does not have money to pay for this. And he's like, you know what? If you truly believe in me this flippin' much, then you help me get my swing back. Help me become the best golfer that you think that I can be. And you'll be my caddy. I will pay for this. Like, eventually you can save your store if you're my caddy, yada, yada, yada. And that's where we're at. But he definitely likes her. So it's a little bit of insta-love, which isn't my favorite. Again, I feel like nothing's happened. So I guess I'll keep you all updated. But this one's gonna be the final one of our video. I also think I'm gonna read outside because it's like 80 degrees outside. And so I feel like that's kind of nice. I definitely need to change out of the sweatshirt and shorts. But yeah, I think that's the plan for the day. Talk to y'all later. The following day. I'm really in my car procrastinating during my errands. I feel like it's better time than any to update y'all where I'm at and fangirl down. I am now on chapter 26, which is page 258. I'm liking it a lot more now. Is it my favorite book of all time? No, I'm thinking it's in the three star range. Also, I'm about to turn the air on because it's hot. I thought I could do this without the air, but oh, I can't. Probably in the three star range. It's okay. I do like the romance and I'm here for the romance, but Tessa Bailey, girly. You're giving me secondhand embarrassment, like strong secondhand embarrassment, and I'm cringing at a lot of moments, but then I'm swooning at a lot of moments. So, like, I feel like you make up for that in that aspect. I think this book would really thrive if it was in dual POV, and I'm not sure why it's not. Third person POV is just, like, not for me. I think that's personal preference, but I just feel like I can't really connect to the characters I want to be in their thoughts, and I'm not really able to be. And I think that's what's really kind of giving me a little bit of a disconnect to the story, but. Again, I really like Wells. It's very insta-lovey. I wish we would have had to not like work for his love because no, 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 or she would have had to work for his love either way. Like no, 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 but it was immediate. Almost to the point where it was like, why did we even need anything to happen for people to get together? With all that said, I still have about a hundred pages to go. So like, who the heck knows? This last hundred pages could be the best thing I've ever read. And this could be like a four to five star read. Probably won't be a five star read, but it could be like a high four star. We'll have to see, unsure. Tessa Bailey's always hit or miss though, like very much hit or miss. Guess we'll go inside now. Final update before I finish this book, I'm on page 298. I don't, I don't think I like this book. <laughs> I don't think I like it. I'm getting the ick so badly and I'm cringing and I'm having to stop like every two to three pages to just like take a breather. Because I don't know how I feel and I don't think I like it. There are moments in this book where I was like, ooh, like, okay, swooning, swooning, swooning. And then there are other moments where I'm like, no, like, let me turn the page. No, no, no. And I need to finish it. And I keep putting off finishing it because I don't want to finish it because I, I don't really like it. So I don't know what the heck I'm going to write this, but we're about to sit our happy tail down and actually finish it because it's got to be done. And it's really hurting me because I love Tessa Bailey. Like I loved It Happened One Summer. I loved Hook, Line, and Sinker. I loved Unfortunately Yours. I didn't love Serial Yours, but I still enjoyed it. And I don't think it, I don't think it grossed me, not grossed me out. I don't think it gave me secondhand embarrassment. I don't think I was like, Ugh. Uh, maybe it's because it's insta lovey. I'm not sure. But even the spicy scenes aren't hidden. They're not hidden. They're not. I. Why did I choose this as my last book for this video? Mm -hmm. I finished it. We did it. I don't know what to rate this. I don't know what to rate it. I didn't hate it. I liked certain moments. Um, didn't love it. But like, I didn't like it that much. <laughs> like I hate, hate, hate when I don't completely love a book on one of these videos, but I think it would have done a lot better if there were a little more tweaking to the book, if there was a little less insta-love, because the whole entire time I was reading this, I was like, why aren't you already together? You've already loved her for so long, you just don't know it? Like, why aren't you together, you know? So that was an issue I had with it. And then also, I think dual POV really just would have shined for this book. I think I mentioned that already, but like, it really would have shined. And <laughs> again, news editing, I had a lot of secondhand embarrassment. I didn't even like the spicy scenes. Which, um, th it, like, that even made me embarrassed a little bit, where I was just like, okay, okay, okay. Yes, so I, I, I don't know. I will say I am intrigued about the second book. I don't know if I'm going to read it, but I am intrigued because single parent hockey? Okay, like, know how to keep me going in the series, Tessa Bailey, like, sign me up. So I am intrigued by that, but either 2.75 or 3 stars, I'm not actually sure now. So we're going to clip to future me, where we're going to do a big wrap-up of all the books we've read with my official ratings and thoughts. 
because maybe she knows what she's talking about because right now I don't. It's been a little bit of time so let's go through my thoughts and final ratings on some of these books. Let's go from least favorite to favorite just because like I feel like that makes sense. We have Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. Now y'all already know I did not really love this book. I actually really struggled with it so I'm gonna give it 2.75. I've thought on it. It just makes the most sense. It took me about 90 pages to actually get into the story. And then the last like 50 or so pages, I didn't like it all. And I was just hoping that it would be over soon. But I did like the middle. I did like the middle. That's where that 0.75 is coming in. Personally, I don't think this is one of Tessa Bailey's best books. But just because I didn't vibe with it doesn't mean that you won't. So definitely pick it up. See what you think. I just wish she would have not leaned in to the cringy element as much as she did. And that's really... That was, that was a miss for me, like truly wholeheartedly. I didn't need to know about a lot of the things that she told us about. Like it could have been left up to interpretation. I think if it would have been dual POV and then edited just like a little more, it could have been a higher rating for me, but not for me, but it is my first golf romance. Can mark that off my sports romance list. Next we have The Real Book by Sarah Adams. This is a 4.5 star rating. So good. This is Sarah Adams' best book. I had a blast with this one. I love, love, loved seeing all the characters from the Cheat Sheet show up again. Oh, it just made my heart so happy. I'm a sucker for a second chance romance. I'm a sucker for a marriage convenience, what happens in Vegas trope. A fake honeymoon, you say? Sign me up. Sign me up. Oh, it was so good. The only thing that stopped it from being a five for me was the ending. I felt like the ending just felt a little rushed. If we had a few more chapters and then got rid of something that I didn't think should have happened, this would have been a five out of five and I'm so excited to see where Sarah Adams is going to go next because I have a feeling whatever she writes next is going to be a five out of five for me. I, literally every single book I read from her just my rating gets higher and higher which is a win. Also another sports romance we love. This one was football. Next we have Wild Love by Elsie Silver. This was a five out of five. This was a five out of five. A six out of five if you will. Somehow this was better than Heartless and Reckless in the Chestnut Spring series. Don't ever doubt Elsie Silver. Don't ever doubt that woman because this was so good oh my gosh a brother's best friend trope hits hard i imagine the two main characters is sydney sweeney and theo james and that was that was an enjoyable time for me oh my gosh imagining ford as theo james was a win it was a win and it was so good and i cannot wait until the next book which we get in september which is so exciting the fact that literally we have a single dad bowling team what else could I ask for? That's just beautiful. That is just beautiful and I need every single member of that bowling team to get a book. Please and thank you. Oh my gosh, please pick this one up. This one's on Kindle Unlimited. This one's on Kindle Unlimited. Go read it, then come back and tell me all your thoughts because you are gonna love it. Also, look at the spines. They're all gonna make a mountain once all the books are out. Pop off blue. Ah, this one just, that just makes me so happy. That one just makes me so happy. Finally, we have Swift and Settled by Lila Sage. This one gets a million stars out of five. Can I give it a million? Because I am. It's breaking the scale. This was so good. This was so good. Oh my gosh. I resonated so hard with so many characters in this book. I sobbed my eyes out. Y'all didn't see it because where was I with the camera? Not present. Not present because I literally did not get up while I was reading this thing. But it was so good. I was just so happy and emotional and moved and happy and happy oh my it, this is her best book this is her second book ever and this is her best book and then the third one comes out later this year too we are being fed this year and i'm so happy the mental health representation from wes from my main man wes beautiful beautiful immaculate i just it was so good and the guys also did we talk about the fact the fact that this is about to be turned into a tv show is making my heart so happy so happy this would just translate so well on the screen and i cannot wait until they get their own season oh this one was so good this one's actually not on kindle unlimited so please go run to your nearest store and go pick this one up because i loved it and i'm obsessed and ye flippin haw ladies and gents ye flippin haw <laughs> Let me know down below if there are any upcoming romances that you want me to do another vlog for or a different genre. I can switch it up. Just let me know. Thank you all for being here. Make sure to like and subscribe. See y'all later.